let's do some edits to the content with some specialized tools. So we have really fun tools in Photoshop and we're going to look at this area in our painting tools actually. The spot healing brush tool, the healing brush tool, and the red eye tool. Those are the three I want to target today. So the healing brush tool, let's start with that. Actually, before we start with the healing brush tool, let me show you another tool that we had. The healing brush tool, they show an icon as a band-aid because they are a fix. What I'd like to show is actually the clone stamp tool. This was a tool um, that's been in Photoshop for quite a while, and it's an editing tool. So if you need to make a little bit of editing, this is it was, was the tool of choice back in the day. So it works in a way that we sample up an area. By sampling, I hold down my Alt key, and I get a little target icon. So by clicking, I'm sampling up an area, and actually what I do then is I paint, and you can see that my little crosshair is able to show me where I'm painting from. It worked okay, however, it took it pixel per four pixel exact. And so sometimes you can see I get a little lighter area. Let's just zoom in a little bit here and show it once again. The problem with this, if I were to sample right here in this lighter area of the potato, alt click, let up on my alt key, travel over, you can see how much lighter this is. So that really doesn't work so well. So Photoshop came up with a great option and that's the healing brush. So I'm gonna start with the regular healing brush because it works very similar to that clone stamp. We used to call it um, a rubber stamp tool. So the healing brush tool matches the sampled pixels, the texture, the lighting, and the shading. So it does sort of a blend, and this is great for fixing imperfections, things like dirt and scratches on a photo, wrinkles on a face. Um, so it's, it's, a great, it's a great tool. So this time again, I need to alt click to sample up and I can change my brush size up at the top in my options. I have ways that I can increase the size. The hardness is how hard the edge of the brush would be. Um, I can also use my quick keys on my keyboard of the square bracket tool or I'm sorry square bracket key so that allows me to change the size. So I'm going to alt click right here move my cursor over, I'm not holding alt down anymore, and I paint. And you can see, well, there's a little bit of a color difference. I don't know how that's gonna work, but the minute I let up on my mouse, it does a blend. Most of the time, it does okay. I might have to go back and sample up. I did an alt click and paint a little bit around the edge. Look at that. And you can see that as I keep painting, my sample area kind of follows me around. Can you see that little crossbar? So it, it's taking up that area and blending it. So that does a pretty darn good job. I'm gonna use my space bar and move to a different area of my potato and show you now the spot healing brush. So the difference between healing brush and spot healing brush basically is that alt click. So I don't have to alt click to sample it, um, I can just click and drag. And it does again a proximity match, it does a texture match, so it looks at everything around it and it fixes it. The problem comes in when we're towards an edge. So if I do this sometimes, let's go right to this one, it looks at the pixels around it. In this case, I was close to the edge, and so it said, oh, well, that's what you want me to mix. And so then it took some of that transparency. So that really is the only time that this maybe isn't the best tool. Um, and if you don't get it all, you just kind of keep painting, and um, away you go. So you can really clean up using my scroll bar and my mouse to, to kind of scroll down. Um, but you can really clean up areas super quick. I mean, look how fast it is just to edit out these these um, imperfections, you one could say, on the potato. Okay, so that's the band-aid tool. Sometimes people say spot healing brush and the healing brush. Now, um, let's just say I want to bring some eyeballs. We're going to review selecting. Actually, what I f what I have here, I'm going to go to my move tool, is a layer. This is this eye 
image or the eye image is on a transparency, which is wonderful. This actually was a ping.png, and remember a ping can carry transparency. So I actually can just click and drag this right over to my potato. And now I need to scale it. So I'm gonna use my show transform controls at the top, grab onto the edge. If I wanna constrain the proportions, I'm gonna hold shift as I drag, click in the middle, of my object to, to try to position this. This is where I want it. Click check, turn off, show transform controls, and there we go. What happens if I have red eye? This happens in animals quite a bit. Happens in, happens in people as well. Um, and uh, we can reduce that. Photoshop has a really great tool that works 90% of the time. So the red eye tool, it's along with the Band-Aid package here, red eye tool at the bottom. So the red eye tool allows us to reduce red eye in a photo. The couple of criteria have to be met. It has to be an RGB graphic or an RGB mode. Okay, so this, these two both qualify. They're an RGB, red, green, blue. We can Alter the pupil size and the darken amount up here at the top, pupil size. So this increases or decreases the effective um, affected area. I would suggest starting with a defaults of 50 and after, you know, if that doesn't work, then go back and change it. The darken amount sets the darkness of the correction. Again, I would leave it at 50 and if it doesn't seem quite right, then either increase or decrease that darken amount. So the most simple way to use this tool is to select the tool, go to your image, okay, and then just click. And it's best if you can click right in the middle of the red eye Look at how easy that was. So Photoshop kind of looked at those pixels and very smartly realized why there was a red, um, red eye that happened from the flash of the camera and could detect some of those other color pixels there and brought those up, them out and basically desaturated, took away the red. Okay, so this works really, really well. I'm gonna click right here on the human eye and show you. Now this has a pretty big specular highlight, so we'll see how it happens there. Worked pretty good. I might want to increase my pupil size just a tiny, tiny bit because there is a little bit of a halo around it, but typically, uh, you know, when you're looking at it from a smaller size, it's going to be perfect. Well, another th uh, refinement tool that we have that we can utilize on selections is, is the refine edge. And now I have to have an, an actual selection be active. And we're going to go ahead and go back to the potato. So I'm going to control click right on the thumbnail. So now my potato is active. I'm going to hold my space bar along with control to zoom in a bit because I want you to see, now just space bar, I want you to see what happens to this edge here. So with a selection, I can go to refine edge. And I'm just gonna show you basics here because we have in the advanced Photoshop class almost an entire lesson on this because it can get, can get pretty intense. So this, what this refine edges does, big picture, it improves the quality of the selection. Back in the day, we used to have an extract feature. Photoshop actually took that away and replaced it with this refine edge. So the edge detection, basically what that allows us to do is detect the edges. Now I'm starting to see some transparency because that's what's behind this. So don't be bothered by that. It's not a checkerboard that's coming up. Okay, I can smooth this and you can see what happens. Smoothing works really nice sometimes if you want it to have more of a softer edge. Feather, here's feather again. So we have many ways that we can feather. This again lets us blend it. Um, so there's a gradual blend out to the edge. Contrast, again, we're looking at the contrast between the two and shift edge. Um, you can see how I can expand this um, or I can bring it down. So uh, some fine tuning and then the output, I get, it, I get to um, choose which, how I want to output my newly refined selection. So you can either put it on a new layer or even a new document. Okay, so there we have it. Um, those are ways that we can do some really fun little fine tune edits to our content.